in a hadith that Ibn Abbas, and Ibn Abbas was a young boy. He was about your age, most of you in here, he was about your age when he was learning from the Prophet ﷺ. Some of the boys from the uh, Quraysh and Ansar said to Ibn Abbas, come play with us. He said, no, I want to go sit and listen to the, the Prophet ﷺ. And they said, oh, there's plenty of Sahaba doing that and they're all learning. And he said, but they're going to die and then who will be uh, knowledgeable? And so they went and played and Ibn Abbas went to learn. Later on, the boys said when they saw Ibn Abbas become a scholar and people honored him and people sat at his feet, they regretted the time they wasted when they were uh, young people at the same age of Ibn Abbas radiallahu Ibn Abbas relates a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, Ikhtanim khamsan qabla khamsin. Ikhtanim Khamsan qabla khamsan. Ghanima, ghanima yaghnamu means to benefit from something. Ghanima is like something you get from struggle. You struggle and you get the rewards of your struggle is like what they call in English booty. Like some type of anfal. So he said benefit from five things before five things. The first one he said, Shababaka qabla harimika. Your youth before your old age. Who can tell me how long Shabab lasts? Right there. Good. That's 40 years old. From the age you're in now, you're in the Shabab until you're 40. You have strength that you don't have after 40. It begins to diminish because life is what they call in English curvilinear. In Arabic, muqawwas. You begin here, you get stronger, 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 hatta badaga ashuddahu. You know, he reaches his strong, strong point, badaga arba'ina. When he reaches 40, he's at his peak, it's downhill from there. And then you begin uh, kuhula. And then shaykhukha. Shaykhukha, you know, za'amatni shaykhan wa rastu bi shaykhan innama shaykhu man yadubu dabiba. A man proposed to a woman, she said, you're too old, you're sheikh. He said, she claims I'm an old man, but I'm not. A sheikh is the one that walks around slowly. I still have some energy. Sheikhucha is the last phase. And then right before, the final phase is ajaz, ajuz. Is after sheikhucha, you become ajuz. You can't do anything. So when you have your youth, it's a great blessing. Do you know what Shabbat Anar means? Shabbat Anar? Shabbat Anar? You don't know? Shabbat Anar. Ishta'alat Anar. Shabab is from Ishti'al. It's the time you have fire, you have energy. And you have to use that energy for good. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your time. The Prophet ﷺ warned us about Ida'at Al-Mal, wasting wealth. The next one he said was Sahatak Qabla Saqamika. Benefit from your health before your sickness. If you, La Qadrullah, may Allah give you all afiyah, you matti'ukum bi sahati wa salama, ma dumtum ahya'a. But if you get sick, the one of the hukama he said, As Sahatu. Tajun ala ru'us al-asihha la yarahu illa al-marda. That health is a crown on the healthy, only the sick can see it. It's a crown on the healthy, only the sick can see it. So your health is a great blessing, guard your health. Some of the shabab here already getting pouches, not good. You guys need to exercise. Don't eat bad food. Don't eat McDonald's. Don't eat the... It's bad food. Really, if you knew what was in it, you wouldn't eat it. Don't eat... You know, really, take care of your health. Eat good food, healthy food. Don't eat a lot of food. The Arabs, they say, Al-Bitnatu tudhib al-Fitna. Having big stomachs will cause your intellect to deteriorate. I just read three days ago, in the International Herald Tribune, 
an article on a study done in Sweden proving that the bigger the waist expands, the more mental deterioration there is. And they actually have proven that young people that have too much uh, fat around their girth or their waist, they actually are already developing plaque in their brains. So exercise. Get out, run around. You have your health, take advantage of it. You need to recreate. You know, exercise is a good thing. You have to recreate. Don't be studying all the time. But also don't be uh, playing all the time. There's a time for each one. Right now you have to have balanced life. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to benefit from your malaka qabla faqrika. Benefit from your wealth before your poverty. Some of you are given allowances. Don't squander your allowances. Use them for intelligent things. As you get older, you see a lot of people waste their money. Wallahi, I was just in Mecca and Medina and the amount of food that is wasted from people in those hotels. They go to the buffet and they pile their plate and then they leave their plate at the table and like it's nothing, israf. Kulu wa sharabu wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink but don't be wasteful, don't be extravagant. Innahu la yuhibbul musrifin. Because God doesn't love people that are extravagant or wasteful. My wife and I, we took food every single time there was food left over. We took it down and there were poor people on the streets of Mecca that were so happy to get the food. Don't think there's not people here in this country that if you brought them food, they wouldn't be happy that you gave them food. Wallahi. So really recognize the tr sacred trust of having blessings. Some of you come from wealthy families. Don't squander your uh, parents' wealth. Utilize it on good things. There's orphans. You can pay $30 a month. My wife and I have an orphan in Indonesia. We get letters from, from this orphan. $30 a month supporting an orphan. You can do that. Things, simple things that you can do at your age. Now, and then he said, Faragaka qabla shaghalika. Ikhtanim, utilize your free time before you're preoccupied. You're young people now, you have a lot of free time. You have a lot of free time. You're young people, but your free time is going to be lost. You won't have it forever. You'll get preoccupied. Sayyidina Umar said, Tafaqahu qabla an tasudu. Learn fiqh, learn how to live before you're in positions of authority. We have ministers in many countries now, not just Muslim countries, in the West. You know Dan Quayle, he was a, a vice president in the United States. He misspelled potato. It's a famous story. He wasn't very bright. You know what he said when he got elected vice president? If I knew I would have got this far, I would have studied harder in school. You don't want people in positions of power that don't, are not educated. You don't want doctors that didn't study hard. We have doctors now that cheat on their examinations. They go to school, they don't study, they cheat. Now how is that going to be when you go to get surgery and the doctor doesn't know what he's doing? And that's why the number four cause of death in the United States is from doctor's mistakes. Number four, according to the Journal of American Medical Association, the number four cause of death in the United States is iatrogenic diseases, doctor-induced diseases, misdiagnoses, giving medicines people don't need, mistakes they make in treating the patients. You don't want doctors like that. You want doctors that know what they're doing, that studied hard. You know what they call a graduate from a medical school who got D's all the way through when he graduates? They call him doctor. And he might be your doctor. So you don't want to be that type of person because you have a trust to, to so benefit from your time. Don't waste your time. And then he said, Benefit from your life before your death. You have a short time here. You don't know how long it is maybe 20 years, 30, 40, 50, maximum you're going to go maybe 100 more years, maximum. 120 people don't live beyond that, very rare. 
for somebody to exceed 120. Most people now, average death is between 60 and 70 years uh, globally. The Prophet said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ سِتِّينَ وَسَبْعِينَ It's a, a miracle of the Prophet because he said, the lifespan of people after my religion starts until the end of time will be between 60 and 70 years. That's a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ that he didn't need to do statistical studies to find out the, the mean, the median, <laughs> and the average lifespan. Allah told him how long people were going to live for his ummah, which means Muslim and non-Muslim because it includes everybody after his uh, me message. So he said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ سِتِّينَ وَسَبْعِينَ So most of us will live between 60 and 70 years. It's a limited amount of time. My suggestion to you, uh, don't watch television, except maybe on the weekend, and then watch things that are worthwhile. I wouldn't just watch waste things. If, it, if it's a film that has some uh, good meaning or something useful, or it's a, there's a lot of interesting uh, you know, National Geographic and other programs, that you can benefit from. Some of the the programs that use good Arabic, you can learn Arabic. So I, you know, there's some even some of the cartoons and things are using fusha that you can benefit from that. But don't waste a lot of time doing that. I wouldn't watch television during the week because you have to study. And then the time that you're not studying, instead of watching television, you should be out kicking a ball around, getting some exercise, uh, exercising your body. Uh, visiting your friends, doing intelligent things with your friends. These are the things that you should be preoccupying yourselves with. And I'm, I'll finish with a story I told the girls. All right? Because it's useful for you as well. There were three fish. Three fish in a lake. One fish was brilliant. The other fish was intelligent. And the third fish was ahmaq. Samakun ahmaq. A stupid fish. All right. And one day, the lake wasn't big. One day a fisherman came and he started casting his net. So the intelligent fish, the brilliant one, he said, it's time to head for the sea because the lake is too small and we'll get caught in the net eventually. So he left, went to the river, down to the sea. The smart one, he said, that's the most intelligent fish in the lake. And if he's heading for the sea, I'm going to head for the sea. The stupid one said to him, it's a long journey to the sea. And it's a big lake, small net. We should just stay here, enjoy what we have. Nothing much has changed. He disagreed, he took off for the sea. So the third one, the stupid fish, he got caught in the net. And then the fisherman took him out and he was frying him. And in the frying pan, as he was frying, he said, if I ever get back to the lake, I'm heading for the sea. Okay? So, don't be like that last fish. Life is a journey to the ocean. You're not meant to just stay in your limited understanding. Expand your mind. You don't get trapped in the trivialities of, in, 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 in safasif al-umur, the Arabs call it, low things. Terbisu Iblis. Don't let these dark forces pull you away from your higher calling to be productive, intelligent human being that actually has something to add to the world and you're not just filling space. Too many people filling space and not benefiting others. All right? Um, in terms of the parents, I hope you take seriously the, uh, the advice about television. Television is a major problem. These games are a major problem. You should read some of the studies about it. PlayStation Nation is a good book to read about serious studies that have been done about the negative effects that these games actually have on neuroplasticity, on attention deficit disorder. There's a lot of work that's been done in this area. Obviously, it's not published because the same companies that own the newspapers right own the the shares in nintendo stocks right really there was a book written in 1958 called the evil eye which took me a long time to find i read about it as a source book in another book i found a copy in australia on the internet because it wasn't ever reproduced this book had documented research from the 1950s about the negative effects on television on children that were done serious scientific studies one of the studies that was done found <clears throat> that uh, 
that small children will not watch real-time television. They get bored. So a three, four, five-year-old, they won't watch a movie like regular people. They just get bored. So that's why if you look at children programming, it's speeded up. It's not in real time. So Sesame Street, it's all quick things, changing images. Now we have the MTV phenomenon, which is children that grew up on that, that type of programming cannot watch normal films. If you watch a film from the 1950s, they're very slow. If you watch them from the 40s, they're very slow. They're driven by dialogue, not by movement. Now all the films are driven by quick moving, uh, car crashes, bombs exploding. It's all stimulation because young people can't watch. If you watch plots like Crash, older people that watch those films can't even keep up because it's just too fast for them. This is what's happening. And then we have attention deficit disorder is a major problem in, 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 de, in, in the developed nations and increasingly a problem in, in other places. One out of every 58 males in the United States of America is now diagnosed with autism. Tawahud. One out of 58. It's a disease that wasn't even identified until the 50s and very handful of people. Now, after the, since the 1980s, there have been a massive explosion of Asperger's disease, autism, and you're starting to see autism now in the Arab countries. Children are overstimulated. They're, they're becoming hyperactive because you're putting them in front of all these interactive things so they can't sit in a classroom without fidgeting and getting completely... Uh, you know, their train of thought is lost. They can't concentrate for long periods of time. They won't be able to read books. A book like the Brothers Karamazov in English, English literature, is a long book. There's a lot of plot changes. There's a lot of characters that you have to keep in mind. If you've re ever read Russian literature, you have to memorize several names to keep up with what's going on. And, and some of the characters have three or four different names. You won't have students that are able to read that. They won't be able to read the great literature of the Arabs, Mutanabbi, Badi' Zaman al Hamadani, Al Hariri, Ibn Muqaffa. They won't be able to read the Hamasa, Ibn Mumbarrad, you know, any of these things because it takes directed thought to do that. So there's a massive responsibility now. And you can't just be like sheep that kind of accept everything that happens and just, oh, yani, khalas. So a lot of these things are not progress. They're quite the opposite. There's a study going on right now. It's a major long-term study on the effects of cellular phones. But the American Association of Pediatric Physicians says that children uh, before their skulls are developed shouldn't be using cell phones because the, 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 the skull is too thin and the radiation is reaching their brain at higher levels, we don't know if they're going to have tumors in 10, 15, 20 years because this is a guinea pig generation. And we have something which is called the cautionary protocol. The cautionary protocol which is used by Europeans and Canadians and the Americans just uh, because of our kind of capitalistic uh, enterprise and stupidity uh, refuse to follow that cautionary principle. The cautionary principle states if you're unsure about the harmful effects of something, then you should have precautionary measures before you actually do it until you find out whether or not it's harmful. If in the, in the volcano in, in Europe, that was based on the precautionary principle because the Europeans practice that. A lot of the American uh, uh, commentators were saying they should have let the airplanes fly, but the Europeans were saying no. We don't want to risk airplanes crashing and people dying because we're not sure the effects of these uh, the, the, uh, the, the volcanic ash is going to have on these airplanes yet. That's intelligence. It's intelligence. Khudu hidrakum. You know, be, be uh, precautious. So, you have to really think about what's happening because you're going to have uh, problems with your children before you know it. If, if, if you don't and, and in Korea now, they're thinking about banding broadband after 10 o'clock because so many of the Korean children are addicted to these video games and they're flunking out in school, having major problems. These are social problems that are going on all over the planet and they're new social problems and they're not being addressed intelligently 
and a lot of the parents are completely ignorant about it.